Hello people, and welcome to another Cities Skylines tutorial. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And uh, it's been a hot minute since we've done a Cities tutorial like this, uh, but you guys have been asking for a terraforming tutorial for a long time. Uh, and we're going to finally get around uh, to doing it today. So I would highly suggest that you put this video on like a phone or a second monitor and play along. So honestly, the best way to get used to these tools is just to play with them yourself. So we'll start with a couple of little basic stuff uh, once we open our landscaping and disasters and we come into the landscaping tools we have four options right here and there's also a couple of options down here in the left and a bit of information in the top left of the screen for us as well if you are on pc and you are playing with the better landscaping mod um, or you have the option of unlimited soil turned on within your mod settings this will not appear and you don't need to worry about it but as we're doing vanilla we'll, we'll kind of cover what this does as we build today so this little bush strength icon down here, represented by the little kind of bar graph chart thing. This is just going to indicate the, the strength of the tool, how fast it does what it does, and how intensely. And then we also have three bush sizes, which again kind of control the size of the area that we're going to be said terraforming. This is all pretty simple stuff. And we'll kind of see the differences that each one of these makes as well. So the first kind of option we have here is shift terrain. Uh, this is kind of probably one of, one of the most popular ones. I tend to use shift and level terrain quite a lot. But of course it depends on uh, kind of the project that you're working on. So we'll start with shift terrain and then um, the left and right click on your mouse uh, will kind of dictate how this tool behaves. So if we were to left click, we can see that we raise the terrain. And it's not raising it by much, and again this is because we're on a small brush size and we're on the lowest intensity. So it's very minor, kind of the difference that it makes, right? We'll just hold and left click. If we hold left click in the same spot, it will continue to raise that point. Get a little bit of a mounting going on. So you know, I highly suggest playing along with this tutorial and just open up a map and just terraform on it and just get used to how each of the tools works. Okay, so that's just left clicking. It's um, it's just generating us a little bit of terrain. And if we right click, we will start digging down. So left will raise the terrain, and right click will sink it. And you can also see that as we're kind of digging this terrain out here, that our soil availability bar in the top left here is going up, and that's because we're excavating soil. So of course it means that we have more soil available. Okay, and then likewise, if we start to raise again, you'll see that because we're adding soil in, because we're raising the land, that, that soil availability meter is slowly going down again. If we were to now increase the intensity of this, we'll go up to level two and we'll move up medium brush size. We can see that now it's just starting to get a little more intense, isn't it? The, the incline is getting harsher. It's raising quicker and it's also draining our soil availability meter a little bit quicker as well. Okay. We've got lots of little, almost like generated ourselves a little valley here, I suppose. And likewise, if we start to sink again now with these settings, we can see that we're going deeper a lot quicker and across a, a wider area. So, depending on what it is that you're looking to terraform, will dictate kind of your brush strength and your brush size. So this is basically what our shift terrain tool does, right? It, it shifts the terrain either up or down, up with a left click and down with a right click. And then you're left with some pretty gnarly looking kind of landscape like this. And um, fine if you're building in kind of like a, maybe like a, a nature reserve and you want to make like a ravine or like a, some kind of gully, then this would be fine. You, you could do this, but say if we're not happy, and we want to flatten it all out again to what it was. Uh, we, we can't, unfortunately, control Z in City Skylines without mods to undo what we've just done. But this is where level terrain will come in and become one of our best friends. I'm going to shift over to level terrain. And I'm just going to knock myself down to a small intensity and a low brush size again. So, similar to shift terrain, level terrain also has a right click and a left click function. So the way to use this is, you know, we want to flatten out an area. We want everything to be very flat. For those that follow Palavan, you know that we leveled out our entire downtown, made it all on the same level before we built anything. And it will kind of 
put this into practice here. So I'm going to right click on the terrain that I want to set the height to. So this means, is that like a lion? Oh, well, there's a lion there. <laughs> Never noticed that before. So we're easily distracted. And we're going to right click that the terrain height that we want to set the level to. Okay. So I'm going to right click here because I want to level all of this terraforming out that I've just done back to the level that it was, which is this one right here. I'm going to right click that and then I'm going to start left clicking and dragging over. And you can see now that it's just going to slowly fill in all that stuff that we've just dug out back to the level that we've right clicked on with this tool. So you see if I draw it over here, it's not doing anything because all this land is already at this level. But if we move over, we can see we're just starting to fill in this ditch slowly now. Now you might think this is taking ages. And if it is, then we can up our brush strength. We can carry on. It does it a little faster now because the brush is doing it more intensely. Fill it all out until we lose all those ridges and little edges. And that gives us a nice little, nice little flat plane to play with. Now, every time if we move off this tool and come back to it, we don't need to right click again. It will remember the height we've already set. So I can now continue to fill in this hole that we just did. Set it all back to the height. So what we're doing now is just holding down our left click and moving into the areas that we want to level the terrain out to. They really are not complicated. It just gets to the point where you need to spend time with them, which is why we should kind of build along here and there. We'll have a little go at some different ideas. Okay. You can imagine. However, you know, I might think I do want a little bit of a dip here. So I'm going to level out to maybe halfway up. So bring in our little blue arrow. We can right click and set that terrain height. And then if I was to start left clicking now, see it's going to start leveling out the terrain at that height. So I could then start pushing all this back. And doing it like that. Okay. So just get used to right clicking and then leveling the terrain out at that height. This is probably the terraforming tool that I use the most. Because it's, uh, it's super useful just for creating larger areas for builds. Because if, if, you, if you're working on like quite a big build, maybe like a campus or a downtown road network or something, um, it's really important to terraform for those builds before you actually start placing anything. Because if you start getting lots of uneven terrain generation and lots of jankiness going on, then it, it really does take away from the build uh, kind of towards, towards the end of it. So absolutely, for the level terrain tool, just keep going around right clicking a bit of terrain and then left clicking to draw it out to the height of that terrain that we right clicked and just get used to how this tool functions and keep it on a fairly low intensity with a small brush size and just kind of sculpt something out for yourself right okay uh, so now what we'll do now we've obviously kind of destroyed this landscape here made it very uneven and a little bit janky we we'll use our level terrain tool with our largest brush size and our highest intensity. And we'll come over and we'll right click on the terrain height that we want to level everything out again to. And then I can just sweep through now with a giant left click and tidy up everything that we've just done. Because we're leveling it all out to the height that we right clicked on. And then everything's gone. So if you find yourself doing some terraforming and you may have done that, I think we've kind of all done this at some point and you're like, ooh. Did it mean to do that? And we can't control 1Z. We're going to come into our level terrain, right click on the height that we want to set this land back to, and then just draw and left click through it, and it goes away again. Okay. So level terrain and shift terrain tools both work really nicely with each other. Uh, so we'll take a look at an example of how I would use level terrain. Um, say, for example, you know, I want a I want to have a little bit of a waterfront going on here, kind of like Dawson's waterfront in Palavan. However, I know that if I were to terraform out here, this is a very sharp edge for a waterfront. And if we want to draw keys in here, the keys are going to be really tall up against where the water actually lies. 
So it's not something I really want to be building on with this height, right? So let's go ahead a little further down the shore. And we can see that when we have our terraforming tool active, that we are greeted with lots of little, little lines that appear here. There's also an overview for this within your info views. If you come down and grab the terrain heights, it will also highlight them a little further. And you can see the mountains here have kind of a much harsher gradient. But this just gives you a nice little visualization of the landscape that you're working with. We can also terraform in this view as well. So I'm working with quite a small area here. So I'm going to come down to a small brush size with a medium intensity. And I'm just going to find the edge of the water and I'm going to say maybe three lines up. So I'm going to right click this one right here. And then I'm going to start terraforming against that. And just push out. And once we've kind of got our initial area sorted, we can maybe move up an intensity and a brush size. Remember, we don't need to right click again because we've already right clicked. The tool will remember the height that we set the terrain to. And then I can just start pushing all of this back. Okay. And then what this will do is it gives me a nice little kind of flat plane to work with that's nice and low down next to the water. And you can do beaches here, little, little bits like nightlife and stuff. You can draw in some keys. And, um, you know, the keys won't look ridiculous now because they're not this high up against the water. Kind of see the difference here, right? So it's super important if you're working with any kind of waterfront build, you, ha you have to terraform first because it'll make a world of difference to how it kind of looks, you know? I think it looks a lot nicer with the water this close to the key, right? rather than having it like this. So it's important that we terraform, especially when we're working with water. Okay. So now we'll have a little discussion about one of the other tools. And um, this is going to be uh, the slope terrain tool. So a lot of time when you're building, uh, especially keys and city skylines, if we just continue to kind of draw out our key along this waterfront here, keep it going a little bit, a tiny little while. Uh, the slope terrain tool is really good for coming in and just tidying up. You see how we have kind of wiped the dirt or the sand up against the key and the water's not actually touching it? I am never a fan of that aesthetic against keys. Um, I like them to be kind of flush with the water, if you excuse the pun. See it happens in a couple of places, you know, it's another one over here as well where the dirt or the sand is just poking up and it, it just takes away from the aesthetic, right? It's not, it's ruining the build for me a little bit. So this is where slope terrain uh, comes into play and a couple of other places as well, but this is how we'll use the example today. So again, very similar to uh, the level terrain and shift terrain, it does have a left and right click function and we want to right click where we want to slope out to. So I want to go for right here and then I'm just going to left click and you can see how it's creating that slope. I'm just going to push all the dirt off my keys. Of course, the water in cities will go a little bit nuts if you terraform it. It's just the, I have the game engine, the game's physics, but it will, uh, will calm down eventually. Followers of Palavan will be familiar with that. Okay, so I'll wait for the water to calm down and then we'll kind of see what it looks like. Uh, with uh, sloped sides instead of just leaving it how it does naturally. Okay, so there we can see now there's no more dirt up against the side of our key. It's just water all the way along. I think it looks a little bit nicer than just leaving it with those kind of like dirt or sand mounds that just bank up against the key. Yeah, it really does make a world of difference. So that's a nice little way that you can use slope terrain tool. If we want to come into something a little further, um, say for example, if we right click on this uh, flat plane that we made earlier, see that's just sloping out. And we can also use it to make kind of gradual slopes. So say for example, you know, uh, very similar to what we've done in uh, Palavan with Dawson's Waterfront again, uh, which again, you know, don't worry, we will dive into Palavan and kind of see some of these things in action and how much of a difference it makes to the build. With our slope terrain tool, we want to right click on the, uh, the middle of the slope. As we drag and click, we can just get a nice smooth 
slope, you know? And draw this out. And it's just going to take away a lot of that harshness, right? Takes away a lot of this kind of like rock looking stuff and replaces it with like a grass kind of overlay, you know? So just right click into set the height as with the other two tools. And then we can left click to slope out. And then this just makes it easier and a little more realistic to go ahead and start placing our roads on because they're not going to be going up some like super severe gradient like this and you know just all sorts of kind of weird vanilla jankiness that we get going on. We can just get a much smoother ascent with our road with our slope terrain tool. And you can also use it for kind of more grander things like sloping up the side of mountains and stuff like that. There's a, a whole variety of things you can do uh, with this particular tool. And then again, just for kind of hypothetical sake, if I decided, you know what, I don't want this waterfront here, and we're going to delete it all, and I know that I've messed with the terrain, and we'll come back into our level terrain, and we'll just right click a, a sensible height, and then we can level it all out again. And but bearing in mind uh, your soil availability, you will need to go and dig some out from somewhere using your shift terrain stuff. And then we can just flatten it all out again and leave it kind of as natural looking as we can and do something else with this part of your map. Uh, so we'll look at the, <laughs> the soften terrain tool right now and uh, kind of have a little discussion. So the soften terrain tool, it's almost like a slightly watered down version of the slope tool. Um, you can kind of see like this is its highest intensity and it just takes a little bit of the harshness off. And we can just come around these harsher edges and it just literally softens them out. So, you know, it's not as harsh. Take some of this away. And this is a very kind of nasty looking uh, cliff face right up against the water. I'm super happy with that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to soften it. Soften it out a little bit. Make it look a little more appealing to the eye, right? So hopefully as you're playing along with this, you're kind of getting get into grips with a little more of how these different tools interact with each other and kind of their landscapes. So soft and terrain, super easy. Literally does what it says on the tin. Just makes that landscape not as harsh. And that you can really help tidy up a lot of different areas of the map using this tool. Like I said, just like a slightly watered down version of slope terrain. Slope, you know, if we're looking for those kind of much harsher slopes, that's where we use our slope terrain. And if we're just looking to tidy up a little bit of the jankiness, then we use soften instead. Like I said, guys, honestly, the, the best way to get to grips with these is just to keep playing with them, open up an empty map like this, and just, tr and just do some terraforming. It will make a world of difference, I promise. <laughs> so now we'll have a little practice and a couple of little hypothetical situations of where we might want to use some terraforming tools. So super simple and easy one. Let's come in and grab ourselves a small roundabout. You know, you guys will use these things all the time in your city. You just have roundabouts everywhere. Well, you should if you don't. And then rather than just leaving it like that and then just moving on with the rest of the build, uh, there's some nice little terraforming things we can do to just help decorate it a little bit. So say for hypothetical sake, let's grab ourselves a medium brush and we'll come down to a low intensity. And then I'm just going to use my shift to rain tool and I'm going to left click to raise and just make the smallest little mound in the roundabout, right? It's a little more interesting. And then what that allows us to do, we can even come through with some fencing. If you're playing with the part life DLC, uh, the nature reserve fence is a wonderful little border for our roundabouts. And plenty more kind of detailing and inspiration ideas are available on the channel and throughout Palavan. And then we can just bring our fence to a nice close. Maybe let's grab one of our larger trees and position it within the middle. A little bit of kind of undergrowth around the base of it. And then we can finish off with just a touch of little bush spice. So you kind of get the idea, right? Just introducing just the smallest little layer of height as an extra layer of detailing really helps make a difference to just 
having a roundabout like this and then just leaving it like that. You know, just that little mound. You don't have to do it everywhere, of course, it's just an idea. But it's just a tiny little example of how we might want to use shift terrain in a smaller capacity. Likewise, if you wanted to as well, you could also sink it and do something similar. You don't have to raise it. So take away all the vanilla trees. And then I could just do a couple of right clicks this time and, uh, and sink it instead. And then maybe we can come through like a couple of rock decals and some of the larger rock assets. And then just little bits of undergrowth and overgrowth around them as well. Okay. And perhaps just some small little trees. So a couple of different possibilities that you can make your roundabouts a little more interesting with, uh, with the shift terrain stuff. Yeah, it's not just roundabouts, you can do this with anything of course. Okay. Very nice. If we were looking to do something kind of a little more grander, uh, say for example, if we wanted uh, an underpass to run under a highway, uh, say maybe that we're bored of doing bridges and you know we're kind of sick of seeing this aesthetic everywhere, you know, we're, we're kind of bored of the bridge and we want something to go under the highway and uh, ramps to come down. So let's have a little a little discussion about this. So obviously we want a road to float under, and again we have an example of this in Palavan, so we, we will go ahead and show this. So I want to be under, so I'm going to start sinking my terrain, right? And I'm staying with a low brush intensity because I don't want to get too gnarly. I want to keep it fairly sensible. And I'll probably say, that'll be fine right now for my road to sit in, right? However, there's no point now doing this all the way along with the, the sink terrain because it's going to be super uneven. We don't need to do that. Once we have our initial ditch and we know that's the height we want to set the terrain to to flow under the highway, I can then come in and grab my level terrain and I can right click the very bottom of that ditch that we've just dug out to set the level terrain to that height and then I can just start pushing out and making myself a nice little ditch. I can maybe move my intensity up now a little bit as well because I know that I've got it all set. And then we're just going to bring out a little ditch like this, okay? Super. Can then come through with my main road, draw this along the bottom. Okay, so we've dug out our ditch and we've laid our main road. And we can now just start to level out the terrain up against the side of the road. Get it a nice even shape, as even as we can anyway, and we'll come back and worry about the sides uh, with the slope and the softened terrain tool as well in a, a little while here. Let's go and grab our highways. Of course, this might not be a highway road, could be any type of road view. So now our highway is going to pass over our arterial road rather than the arterial road flowing as a bridge. And then I'll repeat this process on the same side here as well. So now we want to kind of prepare this road to accept slipways on and off the highway, right? So this is where uh, soften and slope terrain will come in and be our best friend. So just right click in the middle of the slope and then I can start pushing it out. Just a couple of little left clicks to smoothen it out. Again, I've already set my height by right clicking, so I don't need to do it again. And then something similar over here as well. And then while we're here, we can also just soften out the edges here. Okay. And then what that allows us to do is come back with our arterial and then you can then start feeding that. If you do want the slope to be a little less harsh, then of course just level terrain and push yourself out a little bit more distance. Then come back in with your slope. Make yourself a slope by left clicking. And you get a slightly smoother slope based on kind of how long you let that slope run for, right? Kind of pushing out a little further here, much, much more gradual. Doing it quite as harsh on this side. It's a little more steep. So of course the reason that we slope uh, these sides down here is so we can come and grab ourselves a little, little highway slip. And then just bring it down on that slope that we just made. So just preparing the terrain a little bit for slopes and ramps like this will really make a world of difference to the builds that you kind of put together. 
So hopefully this helps you guys to visualize how you can prepare the terrain for whatever kind of build you're putting together, be it a highway intersection like this or you know, just something a little a little smaller and kind of cute like a, a little raised roundabout. Okay guys, welcome to Palbin. Uh, for those that might be new to the channel and don't follow this series, this is my main Let's Play series. There are playlist links down in the description if you'd like to come and check out Palabin. Uh, it's a really beautiful city, it's really nice. Uh, so let's have a little look at some of our, our terraforming here, shall we? So I will throw up some clips on screen uh, from previous episodes, but let's just kind of throw in our terrain view right here. And we notice that the entire downtown is flat, right? And this is because obviously minus the ring road, but we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, so kind of where I want all my main buildings and infrastructure, or like this big sky rise that we're working on for Palavan, it's all flat because I don't want any weird terrain generation when I'm placing assets. I don't want these big kind of cliffs and slopes appearing um, because it really takes away, especially when I'm going for this very kind of densely packed in atmosphere, you know? I don't want any of that here. However, what we did do for Palavan uh, was we implemented um, a ring road that's on a different height. So what I did here, prime example of how level terrain tool is our best friend, right? I leveled out to this height using level terrain. And I did this all the way around. Okay, we can even see here how we now have these contrasting layers of height. Because I leveled the, t the terrain I wanted the ring road on either side of two slightly more raised land masses. And we can see this theme continues all the way around the ring road. Ring road's all on the same level. So from one point to the other, the ring road never moves. If I hadn't have come through and leveled terrain, it would not look like this. It would be very kind of roller coaster up and down and bumpy. What you can just see is we kind of take a little pan around here. The ring road these two lanes right here, it never ever shifts from its height, okay? And we're kind of getting a nice little cross section here of how the level that the downtown is on, this is where all my buildings are, and the ring road has a little bit of sunken vibes going on about it, okay? So again, I'll throw clips up on screen of me doing this terraforming so you can kind of see it in practice. Let's also have a look over at some kind of more severe at level terrain tool stuff that we've done. Uh, so right here, this is where my highway flows from the start of the city, right? So this is our starting roundabout. This is where the city began from. However, the terrain around it was very uneven. Uh, it was so very kind of bumpy. So I made a point of coming through with, again, my level terrain tool, setting a height, and then just pushing it out up against the highway and then keeping that same height going for the length of the highway, which now gives us this wonderful little tiered effect and system. So we kind of have this lower suburb here, right? And then we've got this big cliff. There's a very obvious drop between like Fisher Marina, Highway and Institute of Technology. And it's something I champion all the time. Introducing layers of height really, really makes a difference. And I hope this kind of... This is a very extreme example of it. You know, my, my University of Technology is raised significantly against my highway. And I, I hope you agree <laughs> that the, the difference it makes the aesthetic, you know, having different buildings and different builds on different layers of height, it really makes a difference. <laughs> Repeating myself a lot. And then it also allows you to introduce some bridges like this, you know, if if my Institute of Technology was on the same level as my starting suburb here, then I wouldn't be able to get any kind of cool bridge infrastructure like this and, and paths flowing over in different places. And using stuff like part life cheeses to get people from one layer to the next, you know? You can get some really nice designs in around this and it, it really helps shape the builds and pushes you out of your comfort zone when you're using the terraforming tools like this. Uh, let's take a quick little example at some water detailing that we covered in the other map. We see right here, okay? Where we have this very harsh one, this is too high for a key. So as we arrive down to the waterfront, 
the key is much lower because again I've leveled the terrain out to just a couple of little incline lines. I'm sure there is like a geographical term for those lines, but they're not coming to me right now. <laughs> is it just a gradient? I think it's just a gradient, isn't it? I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah. See how the water is very close. If I hadn't terraformed and just left the land how it was, the key would be kind of up this high, which would then also affect uh, the ferry pier over here because these snap to the height of the key, not to the ferry. So it's a nice sensible little height for people to get on and off the ferries. They're not kind of cliff diving in and out of the boat to, to get into it, which takes it away from a little bit of the realism, although it won't affect your gameplay. Yeah, you know, hopefully you can see the difference. And then what we've also done here uh, in, in Dawson Waterfront, again, I'll, I'll throw this clip up on screen as we kind of move through here. But if we grab ourselves our terrain overview again, and we can see that Dawson Waterfront is actually tiered. Um, so we have this kind of lower waterfront tier here. And then as we move back, we can see these little inclines that we've used some nice little paths to move people up and down those layers of height again. And then it just comes through into a second specialised area, which again has been terraformed uh, just to introduce those layers of height. And you, you get a real sense for it kind of coming in here, you know how the, the stuff further back is raised up. I totally think this area would look nothing like it does if it wasn't for these layers. Also allows you to do some little elevated roads like this, just as they climb the elevation. See how we've done with our tram line here. This is actually a tram bridge, but because the elevation is so micro, it just adds like a little bit of concrete underneath it. And it's these little details, you know, these little details. I will find an example of level terrain as well. Uh, so right here, uh, this is what we did uh, for one of Palavan's ferry stop designs. We came through with our level terrain tool very much like this. So um, previously the river, it ended here. So this is where the, the water started. It was right up against this main uh, arterial road. However, I wanted a ferry stop here. So I right clicked at a terrain height with my level terrain tool that I know I wanted to level it all out to. Okay, so this is actually a really good example. So I'm trying to continue to push out my ferry stop here. You see how it's telling me I don't have enough soil because we have no soil availability. This is fine. Let's uh, fly across over to Mount Palavan. So if you're playing unmodded and you have this problem where you have to keep accounting for the amount of soil that you're using, I just kind of have like this rough mountain side where I constantly dump and excavate soil from. Uh, so I know that I need soil now, so I want to be cutting stuff away from this. So I'm going to right click to set the height to this point, and then maybe a little bigger brush size. And you see how my soil availability is flying through the roof now because we're taking all this away. So I've now banked that soil. But this mountain is constantly being terraformed. It's why it looks like it does, because I need soil. <laughs> but it's fine though, don't worry about it. Yeah, okay. So let's come back to smaller brush size because I'm working with a small area. Uh, and then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to carry on pushing out my little ferry land here. You know, so we're like reclaiming the land, right? We're expanding our ferry port to do more things with. I know we have a lot of people in live streams who have asked for this tutorial before and um, I hope it's somewhat helped. But honestly, the best way is just to play with them, open up a new map and just play with the terraforming tools. Find out how each of them works what their left and right click functions do. And then set yourself a couple of little tasks. Maybe build yourself one of those sunken highways uh, with the road going underneath. Uh, draw yourself out a ferry port like this and uh, you know just reclaim a little bit of land for, for your city. Uh, and then do some, some smaller, little cuter uh, elevated roundabout decoration. I'll show you where I've implemented this in Palavan. Uh, right here. So we have this dumbbell. You see I've just slightly elevated my roundabout, surrounded it with bushes and some trees, and a little water tower. And I hope you agree, it just makes the roundabout a thousand times more interesting. It really does. Similar over here as well, with a, a little bit of fencing, slightly raised using our shift terrain tool. And just helped introduce just the smallest little variations of height, 
We've done something similar here as well. You can see how we've dug out that gully using the, the shift and the level terrain tools. Like shift and level terrain, they go hand in hand like perfectly. And yeah, just see now rather than having a tunnel or a bridge, we've just sunk the high, we've just sunk the railway to, to flow underneath underneath the road. That's a nice little example of what you can do with some terraforming rather than just using tunnels. Uh, likewise as well here with our elevated route with our elevated highway. So this is what we covered in the tutorial map just a moment ago. And we can see how so let's take a look. So this is an extreme example. And this is a great episode to watch. This is part 27 of Palavan, the hillside tram suburb. Um, or the one before. I'll leave links down in the description below. So we can see here, right, this terrain is super, super uneven, very hilly, quite hard to build on and make look good at the same time. This should not be here. <laughs> he has grown up to beyond level three. So I use my level terrain tool to draw out this landmass. See how it's all on the same height? And then we elevate it into a bridge as it crosses over. And then I continue to my level terrain here so the highway could land again. And then it flows into a little trumpet interchange, which takes people into various directions. So this is an example of how I've used level terrain to generate myself an elevated highway. In some landscape that was very difficult to work with, you can see we kind of back onto the nature reserve here. Uh, and even this one here too, you know. Doing some soften and slope terrain stuff up and down this hill. Really, uh... It really makes a difference to the way that the final build comes together. But honestly, guys, you just have to, you've just got to dive in and play with it. I hope for those of you that have been playing along with this, I hope it's maybe kind of explained those tools a little bit easier for you. If it hasn't, I apologize. <laughs> but just keep playing with it, guys. You will get used to it. It does get easier and you will find yourself planning your terraforming a lot more once you understand how each of the tools works. And uh, no, I hope that Palavan is the proof in the pudding. The layers of height between the ring road and the rest of the downtown. I hope you all agree. <laughs> because I'm super proud of it. Like, I think it's this entrance right here. Palavan's ring road with the downtown kind of spice and the layers of height. It's so much better than just kind of allowing the game to do its manual terraforming as you place the roads in, you know? It really makes a world of difference. It really does. Yeah, but that will probably do it for today, guys. Um, if you have any questions, um, please do leave them in the comments. I will answer as many of them as I can. Likewise, as well, if you are not in our Discord, our Discord is a tremendously helpful, kind, warm, and welcoming place. Links are down in the description. If you have any kind of terraforming questions or you're just stuck with something, then throw us some screenshots and me and the mods and the rest of the community will happily help and advise where we can. Uh, but that's going to do it for this terraforming tutorial. I hope it kind of explains the vanilla mechanics. It's really not that complicated. I think people just sometimes, they use the shift terrain tool, create a really ugly, like instantaneous mountain and think, oh no, I don't know how to do this. But it's super easy. Just get used to it. Open a fresh map, left and right click with all of them have a go at building like a little elevated mound in the middle of a roundabout um, an elevated highway where your arterial road sinks under instead of going over and then once you're kind of used to it you can get used to kind of more grander terraforming projects like scooping out the cavity for a ring road and preparing the downtown for its eventual kind of style uh, but otherwise i will shut up and i will leave it there um, there's no cinematics here, so I just want to say uh, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, a like below is always appreciated. Thank you so much. If you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. But, uh, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>